Hey guys, Cassie here and welcome back. So, <clears throat> today I'm going to be continuing in Jasmine Beckett Griffith's A Fantasy Art Adventure coloring book. And I feel like the um, hair needs a little bit more love. Uh, <clears throat> it was really late last night, or not last night, but the night before whenever I filmed this. And I was getting really tired, so I thought I would just put it to bed and come back with a fresh um, outlook. So I think it needs more shadows. So I'm going to use sepia. I love sepia. It's one of my favorite. I'm using Prismacolor pencils. And I'd give you the number, but it's buried in my pencil extender right now. So, But um, sepia is one of my favorite colors to use for hair. I use it for dark browns, and I also use it to shade blonde tones. Because even blonde tones have a, um, you know, even blonde tones have deep shadows here and there, so. And, um, again, I apologize for the tone of voice. I've been having to do these videos rather late. So I'm just going in and I'm darkening up these areas that need it. I have several different types and tones of browns in this. I have um, several cool brown tones and then I have one really warm tone that I kind of threw in there. I'm trying to decide if it needs more of that tone or not. It's rather hard to decide and tell. It wasn't my plan to do this on camera, but I did not have time to get around to doing it today. Saturday, um, sun, Sundays and Saturdays are still rather busy for me, even with the um, even with the quarantine going on, because I have all my laundry that I have to do and prepare for the week. I think I need to, I forgot to zoom in, I'm sorry. I'm gonna zoom in as much as we can and still keep the picture. I'll try to do the top part and then move up and do the bottom part. So, I'm just going into the parts that I think should be the darkest. And I, I don't know if I will go back in and add black. I like a really high contrast in my pa in my pieces, both for coloring and for my own artwork and if you don't know, I do have my own artwork posted on my channel if you're interested in seeing that artwork that I have drawn and created myself. Why do I do this? Why do I color in coloring books? Because I, whenever I draw my own pieces, because I love it. I love the experience of just being able to sit down and color a beautiful picture. And it's just another way that, well, first of all, buying these books, I'm supporting other artists. And I just love it. I just love, for some reason, coloring and coloring books is more relaxing for me than coloring my own art. And it's not because I'm sitting here saying, oh, it's not my art, so I don't have to be as careful with it. 
now, I mean, you see how I'm, how carefully I'm coloring this. It's not because I think I don't have to, I don't have to be as careful. It's just, I feel like it's just, a, it's just a different kind of joy for me. And I'm not using my exacto blade today basically because I don't feel like dealing with having to you know save the pieces and I mean save the shavings and putting them into a container if you don't know what I'm talking about I have a tutorial on my channel that shows how I take pieces I take um the shavings of my sharpened pencils and save them for future background work and normally I would do that but today I just don't I just don't feel like messing with it so I'm gonna I'm just gonna sharpen it with a sharpener. Sorry if I'm going down to where you can't see. All I'm doing is filling in the tips of these tiny little pieces of hair with this freshly sharpened um, tip. I cringe a little bit when I sharpen my pencils because it's like, oh gosh, there it goes. A lot of pigment right down the drain. quite literally, in the trash. That's why I came up with the idea of using pigments for backgrounds to begin with. It's because of the uh, fact that I couldn't stand that there was product that I couldn't use. So I'm just taking the sepia I'm going through to all of these tiny little areas of hair that I can't get with the thicker lead. I wasn't sure with the direct of the direction I wanted to go with this hair if I wanted it to be a light brown or a silvery brown or a dark brown, but I think I'm just kind of going with the flow, going with uh, what my instinct tells me to do, let the picture tell me when it's done. I know that probably sounds kind of cheesy, but it is what it is. So what you guys do this weekend? can see. It probably just occurred to me that I probably did a bunch down here without moving it. I like that though. I like the way that's looking. Just going and darkening up some of these areas that 
think need a little bit more dimension. And um, I didn't plan anything else for this, this segment. Last time I said I would do the um, the hair and the eyes and I ended up not even finishing the hair. So I have colors pulled for the eyes, so we'll see where we get. I can't decide if I'm gonna burnish on camera or not. I have a, um, oh, where did I put my blender? I don't wanna waste time looking for it, but I do kinda need to know where it is. What did I do with that thing? Did I pull it out? I don't know. Oh, I didn't even pull it out of my case. Ugh, here it is. So, yeah. I have a colorless blender, and of course, this is used to kind of, I, it blends the colors, but it also brings out the colors. It makes them a little bit more vibrant from my experience with them and so I don't know if you guys are interested in seeing that process or even if it is uh, going to show up very well on camera Sure. It feels really good to be getting back into coloring again, you guys. I have so missed this. One of my biggest problems is sitting around wondering, you know. I've accomplished enough to reward myself with some art time. And if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, I, um, so I have this, this hang up sometimes. Like if I've had a, a long day and either I was busy with the kids or we had a family outing or something it doesn't really matter what it is or what you know what good it was or even if I just didn't feel great and then ended up not being very productive that day as far as getting my household work finished and done, I have this hang up with sitting down and doing any kind of artwork or anything, or even reading my book, because I'm a, I'm a reader too, I love reading books, and um, you know, if I'm, if I've not been, if I've not been productive on any given day, Sometimes I don't feel like I can reward myself like this. And um, I wasted many an opportunity to get some really you know, solid work done in my coloring books or any drawings done of my own for just sitting around and wondering if I deserve to do it or not. Does that make any sense? Does anybody else have that problem? It's almost like I, I overthink things. I'm a huge, it's one of the things that drives my poor husband crazy. And he's, he's so good about it. I mean, he doesn't chastise me for it or anything, but he does tell me sometimes like, you're overthinking again, hon. Just go color. 
I got this and I'm so grateful for him. But sometimes, you know, we're stubborn creatures and sometimes we just want to wallow in whatever we've got going on. And I'm not talking about days that I don't feel like doing anything but watching a TV show with him and sitting on the couch eating a thing of popcorn and hanging out. You know, like I'm not I'm not somebody that has to have a pencil in my hand all the time. And I guess sometimes I feel guilty about that because I feel like, you know, if you're going to be an artist, you need to have the dedication to spend as much of your time as possible on your passion. I need to make this a topic in one of my time-lapse videos too. Or I, you know, hey, if I'm, if I don't feel like coloring or drawing, if I, sorry if I'm rambling, it's late again. But if I don't feel like doing a certain project or something, chastising myself about it and saying, hey, you know, you've got all these coloring books you need to be, you need to at least color something or you, you want to get better at drawing, you need to draw something. And yeah, that's definitely true to an extent. If I want to improve my work, I do need to spend more time on it than I, than I actually do, but at the same time, you know, I have a family, I've got kids, and if they, you know, if they want to play cards with me or want me to do things with them, and it comes at the expense of, you know, something that, like doing this, I feel like I need to be gracious with myself and understand that as much as I love doing art and as much as I love coloring, as much as I want to try doing new crafts and things like that, the relationships that I have in my life with my kids and my husband, they are ten times more important and need to be cultivated and need to be nurtured. So I'm trying to be more gentle with myself as far as all that's concerned. Tell myself it's okay. No. It's okay to have a balance. I kind of have one of those all or, um, all or nothing type personalities. So it's like if I set out and I say I'm going to draw every day or I'm going to color at least a part of a picture in a coloring book every day and then I end up missing a day or even skipping a day on purpose, I will beat myself up about it. And that's not good. That's just not good. I think I'm not going to do any of the, um, of the warmer brown color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with this lemon yellow. And I'm going to lighten up the highlights a little bit more. Because I wanted tinges of gold in the hair. I think I'll zoom out 
so I don't have to keep moving around for this. This isn't a very involved process. All I'm doing is just going back and kind of kind of making the highlights stand out a little bit more and not look so and not look pale and washed out. Which, I mean, if this were a, if I were going for like a silvery brown, this would work better. Just the, leaving the highlights pale. Um, but since I want a golden undertone, having the golden, the gold kind of come through, well, not really gold necessarily, but having the, the yellow come through will help in giving it that golden brown illusion or appearance. And this is um, lemon yellow, by the way, if I didn't already say that. And if I did, I apologize. It's Sunday night and my husband and kids are in bed. I spent the day um, really just kind of chilling out. We took the kids for a walk and that's about it that I did productive wise. And for the first time in a while I told myself I was going to be okay with it. I just had a, a chill day where we just kind of bummed around. We took the kids outside and played outdoor games and they played tag and we watched them. And it was just a nice day. Nice busy day. I mean, a nice not busy day after yesterday it was kind of busy. All right, so enough already with the hair, I know. I'm just gonna take the light umber and I'm gonna go back over it lightly because I still want the hair to appear brown. And the impact of this will be very subtle, but kind of knock the yellow back just a little bit. As to not appear so brightly yellow. Yeah, I like the way that looks. So yesterday was Saturday and I did, we woke up, had breakfast, had a cup of coffee, then I did all my laundry, we took the kids to the park, not, not the playground or anything, don't chastise me, but we went to this park that's kind of out in the boonies and not very many people were there not very many people were there at all and um but they have a they have a walking trails and a walking track so we took the kids on a walking track and yeah that was what we did yesterday okay step back and take a look. Yeah, that's a lot stronger than it was before. Okay. Moving on to... I think I'm going to do the eyes now. Okay. Just want to make sure that I've got it good and zoomed in for you guys. 
So I've chosen some green and blue tones for the eyes because I want the eyes to mimic like the earth. I want her to mimic the earth and, and her coloring and, and her, you know, what I use to color her. I'm a little intimidated by the earth, actual earth, the globe that she's holding. <sighs> okay. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these with my electric sharpener. Okay, sharpener sound, be careful. Since I'm covering a small space, I need the uh, I need the pencils tips to be sharp. So I'm going to take and I don't know if I'm going to start with green and go down into the blue, or start with the blue and go down into green. I think I'm going to start with the blue and go down into green. And I'm not gonna really try my bit. I'm not gonna try to make these eyes look super realistic. I'm just gonna color them. I don't think I'm the best at coloring eyes. To be, to look super natural. Like with all the, all the tiny subtle little colors that, that eyes tend to have. This is an experiment, experiment with me. Oh, I forgot to tell you the colors I used for the for the top part. I used light aqua, and then for the bottom part, I used spring green. And this is china blue. And I'm gonna just darken that up. I might take my. You know what I forgot to do? Ugh, and I was bearing down so hard on that hair. I forgot to put my backing in. So But you know how eyes, real eyes, they have the little flecks of all the different colors in them. I'm just not, I'm just not good at that. I'm just really not. I mean, I'm gonna try to get better but for right now, since I'm just trying to relax, I'm not really gonna stress it all that much. This is, I don't know, the color has been worn down, but it's PC-909. I tested it before I
think that's not dark enough. I'm going to pull in. I don't know what this one is. I don't know how to pronounce it. Endenthrone blue, which is PC208. And we're just going to sharpen it first because apparently everything needs sharpening today. I don't want the eyes to look flat, and I feel like they look flat. Okay, I'm sharpening the... I'm using my handheld sharpener right now. To, oh no! My pencil lead broke. Off. In the sharpener. Ugh. Gosh, I hate when that happens. Alright, electric sharpener it is. I feel like that's so loud. pencil in and rotate the sharpener and not the pencil and I did that I think or I think I accidentally twisted the pencil once and maybe that's why it came off I don't know I haven't decided if I'm gonna color the pupil with the Prismacolor black or if I'm gonna bring in a pen lines kind of helped. So we'll do the same again on the other side. wow factor, but it'll do. I think I am going to get a pen and color the, the irises. I mean, not the irises, the pupils. I'm also going to grab a couple of grays while I'm in here and go ahead and do the shadow work in the whites of the eyes. And I, I don't usually fret too much about the color, about the, uh, the grays that I use because it kind of is all the same. Okay, that micron will work. And grab my gel pen and go ahead and do the highlights of the eyes. And I'm gonna grab fleshy pink to do the tear duct. And I haven't yet decided what kind of mouth I'm going to give her. I'm kind of leaning towards a nude lip. I'm talking like I know what, I know makeup terms. This, I don't even know what pink this is anymore because there is no kind of indication. I think it's just regular pink, but I could be wrong. So I'm taking that into the corner and coloring the tear duct with that. Then, 
keep brushing it off because I know shavings are getting everywhere with all of this um, sharpening. Then I'm going to take my two grays and I'm going to create shadow within the white of the eye. And I used to not do this, but I'll tell you what, it just makes a big difference in how much dimension the eye has. I think I might want to do the, no, this part will be flesh colored, it won't be pink. But it just makes a big difference in how natural the eye looks. I'm not going for hyper-realism here, but I do want it to have some dimension. Oh, that was French gray. 30%. Like I said, it doesn't really matter as long as you have a lighter gray and like a dark to mid-tone gray. But this is French gray, 70%. The French grays are some of my favorite colors. I might actually use those to create a little shadow in the, or at least run the, run it through that top part of the iris. I don't feel like that's shaded enough, the iris. There we go. Just makes all the difference. French gray probably wasn't the best choice because it's kind of a brownish gray, but it's okay. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Oh, I forgot to run that through there. I did it with the other one, so I'll do it with this one. That does kind of create a little bit of a shadow. Like I said, no wow factor with the eyes, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm taking my Micron pen, and this is um, 08. I'm just gonna fill in the eye, the, um, the pupils. really close to this so I'm going to try to get down here. Because it doesn't take a lot. And at the end I'm going to probably go over these eyelashes with the pen too, just to make them blacker because next to the black pupil now it looks really, really pale. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Let's see how it looks on camera. Yeah. No wow factor, but it's nice enough, I suppose. You can see the blue and the green. So, I'm gonna let that dry. I think I'll take the, um, what did I do with my blender? And blend up the the white part. Funny story about this. Whenever, um, whenever I first started to get into coloring books, it was before all of this adult coloring craze, you know, the adult coloring book craze. So, I would just, I was going out and getting a hold of 
any coloring book that I could get my hands on. And I, this was before I could even draw or anything. And, you know, there were just Disney ones and Barbie ones and Polly Pocket ones and any, you know, just any, any book that I could get a hold of. And I was using, okay, I'm gonna take my gel pen now and make the highlight. Being very careful to place it in the same spot. I'll finish the story in a minute. with kind of sort of per perfection not really <laughs> okay so anyway I um, I was coloring in any book I could get my hands on and I was using Crayola and that whenever I first started researching other types of pencils, I came across the Prismacolor, of course, and heard of the Blender Pencil. And one of my biggest complaints when using Crayola or the off-brands is that I could not get a smooth finish. And when I heard about these Blender Pencils, um, that's the whole reason that I, I got the Prismacolor Pencils, because I wanted to try the blender so I ended up buying the blender and it didn't work with the Crayolas so my husband for a birthday present got me a set of Prismacolors and that I've been just hooked ever since okay let's see how much footage I've got for three minutes I don't know if I want to attempt this earth or not. I feel like I should do something. thinking guys it's already kind of late and I really like to have a reference photo for this rather ill prepared for this part. I think I'll just use the chestnut that I had out before and the pink I just used for her eyes be nice earthy colors and I'm not going to use you know I'm not going to go too crazy with the detail okay I'll zoom back in 
so you can see what I'm doing. And I think I'm going to choose a background element to do next on the next video because I know that I will, if I finish the figure, I'll get bored. Sharpening that away. But if I finish the figure first, I know I start and stop a lot of sentences, guys. Sorry about that. If I finish the figure first, I will get bored with the background and rush it. So I'm trying to do a little bit of the figure, get elements of it done of the subject, and then spend some time on the background. Take the chestnut. I think I am going to attempt to make this kind of a nude lip. She's carrying the earth, you know. She needs to be natural. I don't know. I know there's not a giant chick out in some limbo world with sea monsters and stuff carrying the carrying the ocean or the carrying the earth around, so I don't know what she would wear or have on her face if she were real but I'm still kind of battling the whole idea of maybe doing books in order on the one hand, I think, and when I say books in order, I mean in my last video, I talked about having trouble deciding what to color in this book. So I just went through, I just said, all right, I, want, I knew I wanted to color this picture, or a pic, I knew I wanted to color a picture in this book. So I just said, I'm just going to color the first one and be done with it. And, um, I kind of like the idea of just not having to think about it, not having to choose, but just diving right in and going for it. Kind of like Einstein, didn't he wear the same outfit every day so he wouldn't have to spend time <coughs> deciding. So anyway, I kind of like that idea, but I wonder how sustainable it will be. Good, you know, maybe I should just do what I'm feeling. Maybe I should just do what I feel like is best for me at that point at that moment and not just say, all right, I'm going to always do this or that, but just kind of go with the flow. Maybe that would be best. All right, I want a little bit more shadow in the corners, so I'm just going to take this dark umber and it's not 
not very sharpened, but hopefully I'm getting it in the right place. pretty natural. It's not, it's not a naked lip for sure. I mean, she's definitely got some, some lip color going on there, but try to make some lip wrinkles. Make it a little more natural. But she's definitely not got like and lip, lip liner, lip gloss on, lipstick. Should I give a highlight? Yeah, what the heck. I don't think I cannot give a highlight. I love doing highlights with my gel pen if I can get it to work. see that but all right that'll do okay so the eyes and the hair um, well I detailed the hair and I finished the eyes what do you think looks pretty pretty okay not too shabby so Alright guys, I think I'm going to call it a night and hopefully I will get more done on the next session with this picture. And until next time, God bless you guys. Hope you stay safe, stay at home, and hang in there. This is going to be over eventually, hopefully soon. <laughs> God willing. Alright guys, thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.